Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to the Old Westbury Seventh day Adventist Church. Okay. Happy Sabbath. Thank you. Uh, let's take a moment to greet one another. Let's turn to your left, turn to your right, behind you, in front of you. Let us greet each other. Look at that. Great. Uh, these are uh, your announcements. Well, I'm not going to cover all the announcements. We're going to cover the most pertinent, pertinent ones because most of them are, are in your bulletin and they're also online. But let me remind you, uh, this, is, this is a glorious Sabbath. Tomorrow is Easter. Let us rejoice in celebrating he has risen. And let's not lose sight that this is about salvation and Christ right, uh, rising on Easter Sunday. It's not about bunnies and it's not about chocolate. So let's not lose sight in, the, in today's society what this Easter is really about. Can I get an amen? amen? All right, moving on. So we are back after, what, three, four year hiatus? Fellowship lunch is back. So next, set, clap it up. Amen. 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 I went downstairs to do a kitchen inspection. It's cobwebs downstairs. So we got to spruce it up, bring it back, and we can break bread starting next, next Sabbath. So please, I encourage you all to bring a dish. I need some help. I need some volunteers. I can't do this by myself. So let's I look very forward to that. So, so we have, we're going to have two videos today, two short videos. So we're going to have the Pathfinder video that's going to, we're going to display. So if we have that queued up. Pathfinders, are you ready for some history making news? The International Pathfinder Camporee is going west. In 2024, come play, learn, and worship at an exciting all-new location in beautiful Wyoming. Get ready for bigger and better campgrounds and facilities, new places to explore, and a whole new world of amazing off-site activities. We'll see you at the International Pathfinder Camporee in Gillette, Wyoming. Wow, somebody gave me my sombrero. I'm ready to go right now. That looks good. Pathfinder, yes. Uh, we also have another uh, video to show you on the women ministry, so we can cue that up, please. The Women's Ministries Department of the Greater New York Conference serves to equip, empower, and nurture the women of our conference and those all around us. I am Lisa Gonzalez, the Women's Ministries Director, and I am so excited to tell you about our upcoming Women's Prayer Retreat. That retreat will take place on April 28th to the 30th of this year. And we are so excited because we have so many wonderful, wonderful speakers and presenters. We have Deanne Broggs, Jillian Molina, Perla Bastien Lavon, Michelle Broomfield, Glennie Mendez Calgano, Rico Hill, Dorica Duran, Anne Marie Frazier, June Smith, Claudette Henry. Cristina Lopez and Yamel Contreras. We also have a wonderful wellness center that will only take place on Friday afternoon. There's also a young adult program and an interactive youth program. So you won't want to miss it. If you cannot make it, send someone else. Send a daughter, send a neighbor, send a church member. Give that gift of that mountaintop experience to someone you love. So please join us on April 28th to the 30th, but the deadline to register is April 13th. We hope to see you there. Okay, uh, other announcement. Uh, next week we will have Communion Sabbath. Two weeks, stand corrected, two weeks. Okay, in two weeks. 
So at this time, I want to bring the pastor who has some uh, an announcement to to make. Please come up. Last week, you remember, we talked about our team that made it all the way to the North American Division for the Pathfinder Bible Experience. Some of you have already made some donations to help for that, and we thank you for that. We want to remind you to continue. We like to raise about $1,000 per participant because they have to go with airline, hotel, rent a car, and a chaperone, a parent needs to go with them. And so if you could please remember, online, if you go to our website, go online to Adventist Giving, you'll see a line there. It says, uh, I think it's Pathfinder Bible Experience B. Let me get the letter out. What is it? P B E. There it is. Pathfinder Bible Experience. And you can donate on there. So if you'd like to just write a check for $5,000, that would be great. We won't have to say anything ever again about it. But if not, it, whatever you can give will help. We appreciate that. Please make sure to do your donation online to help for our team going to uh, Tampa, Florida. And that's the 22nd. So that's in two weeks. Uh, tickets are already being bought. Hotel rooms are being made. And so we want to do what we can to help our team and show them. Also, we've asked the youth department. We've asked the administration of the conference and the union to help out. So we'll see how that works too. So remember that. Next Friday night, we start our junior Bible study lesson for those ready for baptism. So if you're interested in having your young people in the class, please make sure that, they, that you let me know when we get the Bible study for you. It'll be live uh, as well as online. So we'll be here at the church at 730. And for those who aren't able to make it, they can do it online also through Zoom. And that information will be coming out. Thank you so much, Caesar. All right, there's a, a lot going on here. We're busy. I'll be remiss if I didn't say a special welcome to those viewing online. And again, thank you for your generosity and your giving uh, that you guys do. We appreciate that. So please follow us on Facebook. Any social media, we are there. We finally made it, so we appreciate everything here. We always want to want you to feel welcome. So please stand for, that concludes our announcement. Please stand for a call to worship. on this beautiful Sabbath morning. And around the world, people are celebrating the birth, I mean, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And we also want to rejoice in that. We are grateful for all that you do for us, Jesus. And today we ask that you will bless us. Be here with us. Pour out your spirit upon us. Bless us as we worship here and for our children's church downstairs, Lord. Anoint the teachers and the children there. Lord, we're just thankful that we can come together on this Sabbath day. So be with us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing.
it is comforting to know that we belong to the Lord. And because we belong to him, he has made provisions for us to be saved from our sins and become part of his kingdom. God has done everything possible for our salvation and in providing for our needs in this life. Our response to God's faithfulness is to be faithful to his commandments to us. We should therefore cheerfully and willingly bring our tithes and offerings to God. You can place your offerings in the offering plates or online through our church website at Adventist Giving. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we worship you this morning with our tithes and offerings. Please bless them so they may be used for your will and purpose. And we pray for the courage to put you first in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This is Siem Reap, Cambodia. The city is known worldwide for its ancient Buddhist temple complex called Angkor Wat. Tourists come from around the world to see the expansive ancient carved buildings. Seha is a tour guide and takes tourists to the ancient sites around the world by motorbike. This unique travel adventure allows Seha to share his faith with his clients while he shows them the ancient buildings. His business has become his ministry. Seha has met people of many different faiths and worldviews. He wants to be a witness to people who have never entered a church. His way of giving tours has made him well known among tour guide companies who hire him. His employers know that he does not drink or work on Sabbath. Seha's integrity takes first place over making money. One day, a man booked Seha's tour service. The customer knew the other tour guides had charged $25 to rent a room in a particular guest house. But when he asked Seha how much the room would be, Seha answered $13. Surprised, the man said, but I've always paid $25 to stay here. Seha told him that the hotel charged only $13 and it was against his principles to charge him more. Why, the man asked. Seha answered, because I follow Jesus and God wouldn't be pleased if I cheated someone. Later, the customer sent a message to Seha saying, Thank you for showing me what it means to be a true follower of God. I'm reading my Bible now because of your testimony. Everyone can use their business to meet people and to witness to them. And when that business generates income, still others far and near may be reached to God through the tithe and promise, regular and systematic missionary offerings. When God entrusts man with resources, it is that he may adorn the doctrine of Christ our Savior by using his earthly treasure in advancing the kingdom of God in our world. As we return our tithe and promise, may we put our desires last and God first. Today's scripture reading is found in 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17. It reads, But you must continue in these things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. and happy Sabbath church family. Isaiah 53.5 reads a new living translation version. It says, but he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. 
At this time, I should send out our prayers and our wants up to the Lord. I ask you also to send out thanks and gratitude to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. At this time, if you have a special prayer, please raise your hands. Amen. Let's all kneel down if we can. I'll lead in prayer after our prayer song. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful Sabbath you've given us. We come before you, Lord, singing praises and sending our prayers up to you. I ask you, Lord, to look upon us. Thank you, Lord, for taking our place and experiencing, experiencing what we needed to experience, Lord, so that we could be saved. Thank you, Lord, for taking that place wholeheartedly and with love. At this moment, Lord, I place this church into your hands. I place every person that's present here into your hands, O oh Father. You know their wants, you know their needs. You, know, you have heard their cries and their joys. And you know every moment of their life. I ask you, Lord, to be with them, guide them, and take of their needs for the day. O oh Lord, each and everyone here has a special prayer that they're bringing forth to you, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to look upon it. Personally, Lord, be with each and every one so that they may be strengthened and guided through their walk in this life, Lord. We are sinners, but despite our unworthiness, you've been so kind and helpful to us, Lord, in all our ways. We thank you, Lord, for that. At this moment, Lord, I place the church, youth, into your hands. Guide them, Lord, as they walk in this world that has changed a lot. I ask you, Lord, to guide them and let your Holy Spirit Speak to them each and every step of their life, Lord, so that they may be guided in the right way. Help us, Lord, as parents, as leaders, as counselors, to guide them, Lord, when they need us. Help us, Lord, to have the wisdom and the knowledge to say the right things at the right time. Oh, Lord, also I pray for the pastor and his family. Guide them, take care of them, and protect them, Lord. I have some special prayers I need to place before you, Lord. I ask for healing and restoration for one of our women's ministry director, who was a former director, Miss Angelina Brown. Be with her, Lord. I pray for Pastor Eddie Legar. Give him healing, Lord. I also pray for our former elder, Mr. Cameron Wesley, who is healing in rehab, Lord. Be with him and his family, Lord, during this phase. Also, Lord, I place the Whispering Pine School into your hands. Be with, every, be with every children there. Guide them, give them the heavenly wisdom and knowledge, Lord, from above. Let that school be a shining light and a path where people can walk into it and get educated and know more about you, Lord. I pray for the kids who are coming back from South Korea. Give them the traveling mercies from above. Be with the teachers that are with them. Bring them all safely home, Lord. I pray for the parents who are guiding their kids in the school, Lord. Guide them and be with the leaders of the school too. Oh Lord, at this moment, I pray for the ones who are sick, who are needy, and who are depressed, and who are sad, who need your help, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit guide them, Lord, and give them the strength they need, Lord, during this phase. I pray for the speaker of the hour, 
Let the sermon that we are going to hear be a blessing to each of us, Lord, so that we may be filled when we leave and be a blessing to others that we meet. Thank you once again for all that you've done for us. We ask all this in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in heaven. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Good to see all of you here. Good to have those joining us online. Thank you so much for tuning in. We just want to remind you that we have live stream 
through our website, through Facebook, and YouTube. So please go to any of those platforms that you're comfortable with and make sure you share, share, share. If you have not yet, subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel where all our sermons are there so that you can share and be a part of the fellowship in the ministry here at Old Westbury. So good to see all of you here. Again, we want to welcome you. Glad that you're here with us today. As you may have noticed, we're missing children. That's because we have Children's Church downstairs. So there's Children's Church downstairs, and they have a full house, and we're glad for that. I am so thankful to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lydia, for that beautiful song. When there's no peace on earth, there is peace in Christ. What a beautiful song on this weekend that we celebrate uh, the resurrection of Christ. Our big celebration was last week. Thank you, Melinda. If you missed that program, you can go to our YouTube channel and see a wonderful celebration on what Christ has meant to us on this day of resurrection. Today, though, we want to look at a topic I've entitled, Into His Word. Into His Word. Let's pray together. Father, invite your presence to be with us this morning. Ask that you will please uh, fill us with your spirit. Guide us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Those that survey and do surveys, one of the premier Christian surveyors outside of Pew Research is George Barna, Barna Research. And what they are finding is that each year, each decade, we as a nation are becoming people who do not go to the Bible that often. We as a nation, we as individuals, we as churches, we as groups, we as families are learning how to live our lives outside of God's Word. And if you look around today, it's clear in the society we're living in, we are living in a time of what many call a godless society, a post-Christian society, a time now where people feel very comfortable at making decisions based on how I feel, what I think, what my personal experience is. What's good for you is good for you, but what's good for me, stay out of my life, stay out of my lane. I'll make my own decisions. I'll make my own way. We'll just do the best we can. And when it comes to this book, we as a country, we as families, dare I say we as a church are finding it harder and harder to spend time with it. There's so much that engrosses our moments that we are awake that we just have allowed ourselves to move into this comfort zone that we can actually live a week, dare I say a month, without even touching, let alone opening and reading. If we were to be honest this morning, had a show of hands, how many could honestly, online, could honestly say, I spend a thoughtful hour every day studying the Word of God. 60 minutes, not 15, although Jesus loves you, and if you can give him 15 minutes, he'll take it. But how many can say, I give a thoughtful hour daily? Now, look, there may be days you're sick, you got busy, we miss a day or two, but let's take it even a How many can say, in an average week, more days than not, I will sit down and open my app or I'll open this book and I'll read from it. Now, here's the challenge. Because we today like to say we must read the Bible and read the Bible we should. But there's a lot of people who we could all say, yes, we read the Bible. There are people who read the Bible but leave the church. What happened? There are seminary students who, with Bible under their arms, read the Bible all the time and then walk right out of the church. I was just listening yesterday. You know, you need to pray for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're not alone in this, but in the next 5 to 10, 15 years, there's going to be about 500 pastors retiring. We don't even have a small amount of men or for those who are in that inclination, women, in the seminary to replace. We are coming upon a starvation of ministers. Soon churches that have this one pastor idea will be an anomaly because it will not be the reality. We are losing pastors all the time. How is it possible? They'll say, well, we read the Bible, but brothers and sisters, let me challenge you with this this morning, if I may. If you read the Bible, but you don't obey the Bible... Let that set in for a minute. If you read the Bible, 
but you don't obey the Bible. You can read the Bible to know about God, but you only learn who God is when you obey him. You only have the power of God in your life when you obey him. Now, how do we know people aren't obeying the Bible? Well, <laughs> look at our church. <laughs> Come on. This church should be packed. Seriously. Should be full. We should be having baptisms on a regular basis because you understand if you're supposed to read the Bible, you're supposed to share the Bible. If you share the Bible, you're winning souls for Jesus. If you're not winning souls for Jesus, you're not really. I'm going to use the Bible on this so you don't get mad at me. If you've not invited one person to church in the last year or in your lifetime, if you've not been a part of a Bible study in this past year or in your lifetime, if all you're doing is holding the Bible, possessing it, collecting it, having all the apps on your new electronic device, but you're not winning souls for Jesus, brothers and sisters, you're in trouble. Because if you read the Bible and don't obey the Bible, soon you will stop reading the Bible. And that's where we're at. That's where we're at as a, as a, as a denomination, as Christians. And when we don't read the Bible, we're not really clear what God wants for us. And therefore, we are raising a generation of illiterate people when it comes to spiritual things. How do I know that? Let me show you one that just, just, just baffles my mind. They did a survey, and they found that teenagers consider it a greater moral sin to not recycle than pornography. Now let that sink in for it. It is worse for you not to put your glass and plastic out to recycle than the exploiting and the crime of pornography. They think it's worse. Well, friends, something's wrong there, right? Now, look, I'm all about recycling. I have my little, uh, my little uh, plastic bin. Although my family struggles because in Hawaii we had a one for, for yard clippings, we had paper, and then we had plastic and glass. And here in Westbury, all you do is glass and plastic. And I'm constantly pulling out aluminum cans. My wife thinks it's just another trash can. She throws everything in there. But they don't want that. So they'll throw out of that bin onto the sidewalk all the stuff that doesn't belong. Because recycling is good. It's way more of a concern than pornography. Something's wrong. To read our Bibles but not to obey our Bibles is reflective in the way our church is today, the way our society is today. We can read the words of Jesus. I even have a Bible here that has the red letters. Oh, it's amazing. All the words of Jesus are in red. Have you read them? I've read them. Will you obey it? Well, if it's convenient. And as a result, we struggle. We fight. We divorce. We have no problem sitting down and watching a two-hour movie that will repeatedly take the Lord's name in vain. And it doesn't even bother us. How can you sit there and listen to somebody say, Jesus, repeatedly in a movie, and you don't turn it off? To sit down and watch someone say, God, and it doesn't even stir in you one moment. Oh, I got to get out of this movie. We have no problem in having so many subscriptions to so many vile, we're paying Satan to kill us spiritually, and we don't have a problem with it. We can sit down and watch Netflix. What do they call it now? Binging? They binge. What I'm told is that when there's a, a five seasons with 20 episodes, I'll sit down and destroy my health and my spirituality and watch them all at once and then get up and wonder why church is boring. As a matter of fact, I don't even want to get to church. For those of you watching online, let me, uh, come on, brothers and sisters, COVID. The mayor has even said, our dear mayor has said that he wants to outlaw the wearing a mask in the city because of all the crime. So one time it was against the law if you didn't wear it. Now it's against the law if you do wear it. Well, come on. Come to church. 
Will church save you? No, but it will give you a moment to pause and open our hearts to hear God speaking to us. And hopefully something will click inside of our hearts and will remind us we've got to get back to studying God's word. We're in trouble. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, Arise, Lord, because they have made void your law. And we're doing that in this country. We're doing it in this country. And soon... But then again, maybe we should rejoice because we are told all this has got to happen before Jesus comes. It just lets us know how close the coming of Jesus is. So hallelujah. Except the problem is when Jesus comes, turn with me in your Bibles. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 is an interesting little passage where Jesus is speaking. Red letters. This is good. Matthew chapter 7. Looking here at verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. That's got to be by far the worst thing I could ever hear. Because the majority of us sitting here today, and those watching online and those that will be watching in the future, are doing it because you're saying, Lord, Lord, please bless me. Lord, Lord, I love you. Lord, Lord, I have a Bible. How many own a Bible? You raise your hand. Do you guys own a Bible? How many own a Bible app? (laughs) Get the rest of us. Yeah. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Why are you doing this? I'm a Christian because I want to be with Christ, and I want one day to live with him for all eternity. Brothers and sisters, I don't like living in this world. I just don't like it. It is mean. It is cruel. It's polluted. It is disgusting. The crime is unbelievable. We pray for the Ukraine. We pray for Myanmar. Uh, my, My wife told me about what just happened in Brazil. Someone went in with a machete and cut somebody up. It wasn't even a gun. For those of us that have kids in school, can you imagine the day you get the call? Sorry, Mrs. Mangum, but Blue Mountain Academy in Pennsylvania was attacked and your son Lucas has been shot. What about the kidnapping? What about the rapes, the child molestation? The alcoholism, the divorce. I got a call this afternoon. I'm going to the hospital of someone who's in the hospital. I don't want to live in this world anymore. I want to go to the kingdom of heaven. But what I don't want is to get there to the pearly gates and say, Jesus, here I am. I was even a pastor. Lord, Lord, I preached for you. And he says unto you, oh, wait. Not everyone will go in, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. He read the Bible, and he obeyed the Bible. Do you read the Bible? Then man up, woman up, get the grace of God, and obey the Bible. Obey it. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonderful things in your name? That's pretty powerful. But I will declare to them, I never knew you. What? So friends, as your pastor, whether you consider me a friend or not, as your pastor, read your Bibles and obey your Bibles. Buy a new one if you need to, if that will motivate you. Buy a new one. There's Bibles out there now with all kinds of helps in them. You can get, uh, if you like Ellen White, you can get a Bible that has Ellen White's helps in it. You can get one that has, uh, you can go to Andrew's, Andrew's Study Bible that has some of the leading theologians give commentaries. One of my favorite Bibles is the, the Cultural Study Bible, the New King James Cultural Study Bible. It is phenomenal. It, it takes and it connects the Bible passages with the time that they were written in and brings the Bible alive. If you're not in a love relationship, get the book Desire of Ages and read the four Gospels. Your life won't be the same if you'll read it and follow it. 
Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Verse 24, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. You know the story, right? And the rain descended and the floods came. Friends, every day it is raining on your parade spiritually. Every day it's raining. The winds are blowing and beat on the house and it will not fall. This one. And everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will liken to a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And friends, that's what we have. We have a lot of people that are building upon man's words, and that's what's being reflected in our society today. When we see nothing wrong with, with the issues that are going on, and what's even worse is we're being told, be quiet about your beliefs. You don't agree with this agenda? Be quiet or we will counsel you. We'll shut you down. When did they shut Jesus down? Why? Some of us are, are afraid to study the Bible. We're afraid that if we open it up, we will actually see in there things that we have to change, and we're afraid to make changes. Some of us are angry at God. We've had a death in the family. We've had a death. We've had a divorce. We've had something we really wanted, and we're angry at God. And so we become bitter against God, and so we stop reading. Some of us are just plain lazy. We're just lazy people. And because the, the iniquity abounds, the love of many is growing cold, that we really find the Bible just boring. There's no life in it. I don't know how many parents have come to me and said, Pastor, how can I make the Bible alive for my children? Well, what am I supposed to give, a magic potion? What am I supposed to do? Well, if you do it like this, it'll be okay. If you get the newest translation, they'll love it. See, children will love what the parents will love, and the parents will only love what God loves if you love God and obey God. So what can we do about this? I want to encourage you. Stop making excuses for why you don't read the Bible and obey. Stop making excuses. I'm busy. Pfft, come on. Is that what you're going to tell Jesus? Well, I wanted to love you, Lord, but I was just too busy for you. But now I'm here. Go ahead and let me in. Stop making excuses. <laughs> An insurance company shares some of the excuses that people give for when they have wrecks. Listen to this. Uh, going home from work, this is what he told his insurance adjuster. Going home from work, I drove into the wrong house and collided with the tree I don't own. As I pulled away from the side of the road, I glanced at my mother-in-law and headed over the embankment. That's good. Blame. I attempted to kill a fly, and I drove into the telephone pole. Here's one of my favorites. The telephone pole was fast approaching. I attempted to swerve off its path when it struck me in the front end. And here's got to be the best one I've heard. The pedestrian, and we're in New York, so you know if you're driving the city, this is good. The pedestrian had no idea which way to go, so I ran him over. <laughs> That's good. You ever been on there? You been in the city? People running around? What's the excuse? You excuse for not reading the Bible. I'm too tired. I'll do it later. I'll get a new one. I'm too busy. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand. I don't need it anyway. Start today, friends. Start right now, making a commitment. Hebrews 3.15 says, Today, if you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your hearts. Today, 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 today. Make a covenant today that you're going to start studying the Bible. We already passed New Year's, so you've blown that. Let's go in now. It's the beginning of April. Here's a new opportunity. More than that, we have a new day. Don't let the sun set today. And you've got 24 hours. It's the Sabbath. What else are you going to do on the Sabbath, right? Oh, I've got to take a nap. Okay, I get that. 
came to church, came to Sabbath school, take a nap. Then what? You're telling me in a 24-hour Sabbath period, you can't give one hour to the Bible? It's because we got to pray, Lord, please revive my heart to have a love for your word that I don't have right now. Be honest with God. He knows anyway. I learned a long time ago, I don't lie to my wife anymore. I just tell her. I just tell her. She went today to visit our son Lucas at Blue Mountain Academy. So the Brazilians, we got some here today, welcome. Good to have the Brazilians here. The Brazilians, they love their children in a way that I didn't grow up with. Nothing wrong with it, I just I didn't have it. So Brazilians are going to the Brazilian children over at the school in Blue Mountain. So they wanted to take their food with them. So my wife wanted to make food. So what my wife does is she waits till Friday night because it has to be fresh, right? You can't make it on the Sunday before. You can't make it before. It has to be fresh. So last night, she's coming upon the Sabbath hours, and she's trying to finish it all up. So, so my son, who's going to have an amazing meal today, which I'm not going to have because she took all the food. No, that's not true. I guess she did. She, she, left, she left me, a, I think, two beans and one piece of rice. <laughs> Because it's her baby, and she needs to feed her baby the rice and beans. And, you know, I told her, honey, I love rice and beans, too. You're not Brazilian. <laughs> so I get my little two beans and a rice, while my son here in a couple hours is going to be feasting on the pounds of rice and beans they took over there. And she's cooking and cooking and cooking. And so, honey, can you help me? No. No, I do not want to help you. Honey, do the dishes. No, I don't want to do the dishes. It's my meditation time. Because it's Sabbath, right? It's, it's ready for Sabbath. It's time to sit down, relax. And she's in there cooking for her son. So do you think I lie to her? Honey, I would love to give up my Sabbath time to do the dishes that you're making, this kitchen that you're destroying, so your son can have a good meal tomorrow while I sit and watch you on Facebook. Just be honest. Come to God. God, in my heart, I don't love your word. God, in my heart, I would rather watch five hours of Netflix than I would to spend five minutes in Deuteronomy. See, God can work with that. Because once you're honest and you just get open and you just admit it, Lord, I love, I love Hulu. Is, that, is it Hulu? Shame on you. You guys shouldn't know that. <laughs> Netflix, I could say that one. How many of you have a subscription to Netflix? Oh, no, put your hands down. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't tell me it's because I'm watching the History Channel. <laughs> the History Channel puts out so much garbage against the Bible that their motive in doing it is to get people to stop reading it. Start today. Now, write it down. Lord, and friends, I encourage you, I know the phones are good, buy a good old-fashioned Bible. If you don't have one, get one. Establish a plan to do it. God has a plan. I, when I was a kid, I, I did karate. I did karate for quite a while. And um, karate... Taekwondo, they, they have these things they call belts, and they're, they're different levels. And so you, you start with the white, and you work all the way to the black belt. Once you get the black belt on there, you know, you're supposed to be registered as a lethal weapon, which is, is foolish, because anybody that kills someone, you're a lethal weapon, whether you got the belt or not. Well, let me ask you, which is the hardest belt? Which is the hardest belt? The white one is the hardest belt. You know why? Because you can look at this belt all day. Until you make a commitment, pay the fee, and go to the class, you will never get one. This is simply the result of the almost impossible decision by 90% of our population to even begin this belt. 
The commitment it takes to make time in our schedule to go twice a week to get this, we just don't do. So to get to this belt is an amazing accomplishment. If you're a black belt, now I have to let you know I am not a black belt. <laughs> I have a black belt, but I'm not a black belt. I don't know, I, don't, I got several belts. Then I, I became a Seventh-day Adventist, and the tournaments were on Sabbath, so I couldn't go to the tournaments anymore. I used to go to the tournaments and fight in the tournaments, but all the tournaments were on Sabbath. I gave my life to the Lord, got sober, cleaned up everything, put this down. But so many of us, we, we, we don't have a plan to spend with God in his word, to read and obey. We just don't have any plan. Well, I'll go to church. And the thing is, the majority of us, we have enough willpower to come to church. We have enough willpower to get to church. And church is good, friends. But how many of us in church have seen brothers and sisters just like that walk away and never come back again? Face your fears, whatever it is. Do you feel guilty? Has the devil gotten to, and this is where so many of the, like, you know, if I read the Bible, if I spend too much time with God, I've got to deal with what I am, who I am, what I've done, what's been done to me, the abuse that I've given or the abuse I've received. God knows your life inside and out. That's the good news that you will find in the Bible. God knows who you are. He knows what you've done. He knows what's been done to you. And he loves you anyway. He loves you anyway. You see, friends, the longer we put off quality time reading and obeying, the harder it will become. And, and here's the real danger, the more we will look like the corrupt world that is around us. How many of you watched on Tuesday the motorcade? We were, uh, we were in Queens on a high rise and could look right over the river by the United Nations where the former president went right down by. And if you look at the courthouse, the police were there with fences up. They had to keep the, the red people on this side and the blue people on this side. Because there's a lot of people not happy with what happened on Tuesday. There's a lot of people that are so elated they can't stand themselves. Justice has been served. We live in an age today, friends, where we make the majority of our decisions not on the Word of God. It is killing our schools, it's killing our churches, it's killing our families, and soon it's going to break our society down. And all I'm asking you to do is please, please read your Bible and obey it. Ask God to help you obey. I get it. I know it's not easy to obey. I realize there's a real struggle. There's a real battle going on. We become addicted to things. We become addicted. I, I, I watch YouTube because on YouTube I can check our church things and I can see uh, uh, amazing facts and there's a lot of archaeology. I want to do one about the 10 latest discoveries in archaeology that prove the Bible. It is incredible what they're finding. Just incredible, the stuff. You can no longer say the Bible is some, some fairy tale, something like, oh no, we have so much evidence to prove the Bible. You think that would be enough, but... But one time a commercial comes on and you don't turn it off. And how YouTube knows I like guitar riffs from heavy metal. Because look, you know, I, I told you my goal as a kid to grow up was to be in a rock band. I had a rock band. Well, I don't know if you call it a rock band. It was a bunch of teenagers with electric guitars and amps and alcohol. And it was a mess. 
But that was my goal growing up. I wanted to be a lead guitarist, Emerald, in a heavy metal band. That was my goal. Somebody told YouTube, because the commercials that come up are of the bands we used to listen to. I didn't tell them that. Did somebody hear me say that? And then go to YouTube and tell them, hey, that clown, if you put it on there, you'll go after and you'll get something that just stirs within him. And I thought I was over it. But when I hear certain riffs, <gasps> turn it off. It's like a drug. It is. It's like crack cocaine. One smith, boom, you're gone. And I have had to pray to the Lord because there's a couple of times I didn't hit the exit button as quickly as I should have. <laughs> and the concert came up. <gasps> and the Metallica is playing. Ozzy's playing. Pink Floyd is playing. Led Zeppelin commemoration thing from 20 years ago. I can't believe they're still alive it's playing. These things are playing on there. And it's just like yesterday. It all comes rushing right back. And that's why God says, you got to run from it. You got to cut it off. There's no slowly taking it away. You got to cut it off. You got to put the filters on. You got to put on whatever it takes. And it doesn't matter what it is that your addiction is. The devil knows. The devil has some connection with YouTube. The devil has some connection with TikTok. I'm having to work with my kids because my kids were watching what they're doing. Now, I've taken TikTok off. I've shared that multiple times. I've taken it off. I can't handle it. I'm a 53-year-old man, and I can't handle TikTok. The other, the, whoever it was, six months, seven months ago, I got so hypnotized by that thing, I sat there for three hours going through it. <gasps> and then all of a sudden, it's like, Tanya's calling me. Leave me alone, woman. I'm busy. TikToking. And then the Holy Spirit said, you're supposed to be a preacher. I will be as soon as I get through these reels. They're so cool. Where do they get all this garbage? And with each one, I just flick away a little bit more of my spirituality. Pew. Morals. Pew. And I start ignoring the foul language that comes on. And I don't know how they know I'm a male. They put every naked woman on there that they can. I don't know how they know I liked these old bands and they put them on there. Maybe for you it's food. Maybe it's pornography. Whatever it is, it's real. But I guarantee you this, if you open this and you flick the pages of this, oh, oh, oh. the more you do it, the more you love it. And next thing you know, three hours later, You'll be like, oh, wow, Jesus did that? That's amazing. I never saw it. But we don't. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. Who will be a wise man? Who will be a wise woman? The one who hears and does. So friends, please. Please. Stop waiting. Stop making excuses. Set up a schedule. Be honest with God. Just tell him. He already knows anyway. Be honest with him. If you need to, buy a new Bible. Amazon will have it to you tomorrow. It's amazing. Amazon next day. Right there for you. And open it up and say, Lord, please. Now, if you're already reading your Bible... Let's go to the next level and obey the Bible. So if you're reading, let's obey. Because as we obey, we'll invite people to church. Your prayer life will be different. We didn't even get into praying. The average person prays what? 
30 seconds to a minute a day? And you say, because we don't have nothing to pray about. After all, we live in America. We have everything we could possibly need. I have a home, I have a car, I have a job, I have money. We treat God like insurance. When we wreck the car, we ask him to come clean up the mess. We treat God like a, a, a butler. Ring the bell when we spilt something. Lord, come clean the spill up. And then please exit so I can go on with my life. Oh, Lord, please forgive us and help us. So will you join me? If you need a nice Bible study reading plan, get it. You need a new Bible, buy one. But friends, let's be people of the book that read the book and then obey the book. Father in heaven, we're living in such dangerous times. We are just being flooded with so much. The news has an agenda. TikTok has an agenda. Hollywood has an agenda. The billboards that are all around us. How many of our, our associates, our, our, our friends, our, our colleagues, our, our work associates, our, our school friends, they have agendas. But ultimately, all of those things, if they're not led by the Spirit of God, are the devil's agenda. And his agenda is to bring you down, to bring me down. So, Lord, help us as your people today to, to fight off, to, to set boundaries, to reconnect, and for maybe some of us the first time, to read and to obey, to hear and to do your will. So, Lord, whatever it is, if it's in our, if it's in our appetite, if it's in our diet, if it's in our watching, if it's in our relationships with one another, Lord, wherever it may be that you're speaking to us, Lord, help us not just to read your word, but to obey the word, your word. Help us to reach out to our friends and to our family to do the work that you've called us to do. Lord, we know great things can happen. Revival and reformation can happen in the life of one who will allow your word to transform our lives, to fill our lives. So, Lord, today, may we get into your word. We ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.
the importance of reading our word every day. Growing up, I used to admire a lay member who was a pastor. He memorized the whole Bible. So when he used to preach, he quotes at least 50 verses by heart. Now, growing up, we were told, you know, read your Bible, memorize it. Those days are coming when the Bibles are going to be taken out of your hands. We never hear of those, but I know the Bibles are in our app, but it only takes a few seconds to banish those apps. So let's all be mindful of reading the Word and keep it in our hearts so that and also teach our kids to buy heart them so it may be a blessing for them. Let's pray. Loving Father, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful sermon you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. Inspire us, Lord, to read our word and keep it in our hearts, Lord, so that when Satan comes looking for us, we may have a weapon ready to fight him back, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. As we go back home, we ask you, Lord, to give us the traveling mercies. Bless us and guide us and, be an, and make us to be an inspiration and a blessing to everyone that we meet. Thank you once again for the deacons and the deaconess that you have provided us for this church who have tirelessly served you, Lord, and every leader that's here, Lord. Be the members that are here, bless their families, guide them, and have them, uh, ha- make them have a wonderful Sabbath today, Lord. We ask all this in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in heaven. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated. The deacons will usher you out. I'm a